what made this country great, and we are in a political season, so forgive us if we keep talking about this stuff. We are Catholic first, but we're also Americans. What made this country great in its foundation and its roots is, yes, it was built on a desire for freedom, freedom of expression, a desire for man to be autonomous and to be able to seek his own happiness, to be able to seek his own end. Yes, right, this unyoking from from, uh, Europe and particularly England. There's this like civic dimension to it, but it can't be uncoupled from the fact that it was also built on a belief in the Judeo-Christian God. Yes. It's it's in our very DNA. And it's not just, I'm not talking about the Mayflower, because there were a, that's the popularized story of the pilgrims coming, uh, you know, the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. No, there were others that came and inhabited this land over the various coasts, whether East Coast, West Coast, the Gulf. And they brought the Judeo-Christian tradition with them. They brought them. the gospel with them. They brought the gospel with them. And that has been tainted because the evil one who has dominion over this world wants to taint that story. Yes, were there men that did evil things? Were there men that did things that should not have been done in the name of the gospel? Yes, that's what we were talking about, the sin against the third commandment. But in its purest form, this country was built on the gospel principles right? You had Protestants that came and you had Catholics that came. You had saints that came, right? Uh, um, De La Casa. De La Casa. Uh, I'm blanking on uh, uh, Sierra. Um, oh, Jennifer Sarah. Yeah, Jennifer Sarah. You had saints that came, great saints that helped build this country and establish it. And so that's in our very fabric in our DNA. And we're losing that. And because we're losing that, it's starting to erode those civil principles that help found this country, right? Without God, then you're going to lose those civil aspects. And this is, mm. I'm not the only one to say this, right? But I truly believe it. If you lose sight of God, then the things of God, right? Autonomy, freedom of expression, the ability to think and to act, right? Which are divine gifts. They're going to be eroded and we're seeing those erosions. So A, we have to be careful as a country and what, what you got me thinking on was that what we were talking about before the show, the uh, um, uh, Kamala Harris had announced her new uh, vice presidential uh, pick, right, uh, for this election season. And he comes from Minnesota, and Minnesota was one of the first, uh, was it Minneapolis? Minneapolis. One of the first large American cities to allow for the Adan, the call to prayer, to ring out throughout the city. And so they actually changed the city's no, uh, noise ordinances to make that possible. And it's like, I don't, I'm, so I'm Middle Eastern, right? I, I come from a culture. I go to Jordan. I love going back to Jordan. And that's where my, my father's from. My mom's from Palestine. You go back and you visit. And I just love that part of who we are. But that's a part of who we are, right? The Adan, the call to prayer. And it's like, in that context, it fits. And I understand in that context. But when I hear it, happening here, I I don't know why I can't yet articulate it. So if you're watching this or if, if you have an argument for or against, let us know. I'll throw it out to you if you have any yeah. thoughts on it. I don't know why that doesn't sit right with me because we're about freedom of religious expression. Yeah. Right. That's one of those principles, but I don't know why that doesn't sit right with me. Well, I mean, for me, part of... Let's just to start the conversation. But but. Christianity is always a propose. We propose, like they came here, they weren't making the natives become Catholic. Some people were, like, let's own the story. There there could be, but for the majority, majority, that isn't how the gospel spread. It was was a, a proposition. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, there was a the Islamic faith was one of conquest. Like it rampaged through, you know, from the Middle East over the North Africa, the fastest of any, any army, any religion. It just did. It made it all the way to Europe by the year six, you know, it started in the 300s by 600. It was in Spain and, and it was through conquest. It was fighting. Well, it started in the 600s. Uh, the, no, the, it started in 600. Oh, yeah. yeah. So by like 652, they're already to Spain, yeah, yeah. you know? So it, it made, it went quick. It was because it was, it was okay. Part of, 
of, you know, conquest. That was part of it. So I think some people are scared about that, not only just because the ancient history, but it seems that when a, ma a, a majority of people get together who, like Jordan, they're, they're going to impose that on everybody else, that we have what they call Sharia law, where there's, we're going to take these laws yeah. and then put force those on everybody who's around. That's, so once you have like these strongholds like Dearborn or you have these things, then it's like nothing else. Like here in America, we, we live by religious freedom, a pluralism where you can have that, but there's, there, those are at odds with each other. If the goal is to everybody is going to submit, Islam means submission. If we're going to submit to Allah, then what does that entail? Does that mean that you know, is Sharia law the goal? Like these are the conversations that we have to have, but America is built on religious freedom. Not everybody has to be Christian, but everybody should have the freedom to, 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 to express themselves in that way. But once we start to force it on other people, as far as, you know, you have to, that's a different conversation. But then I hear the other argument, well, now you're putting the 10 commandments in, in classrooms and making that laws and people voted for that. It's different. If people want that and they want to vote in their state, we have the the Tenth Amendment that says that you know the states we have sovereignty in the states and states if they elect people who represent them and they I, do that, I, would, I get it. So to drive home what I'm hearing you say, because this is the take that I I'm formulating on on the question. This country is founded on Judeo Christian principles, and without those Judeo Christian principles, the foundations of the country and the principles that it was established on they don't make sense right? You, they, you can't really hold them together anymore. Um, so the two are integral. As much as people would like to inherit the good of the system without also inheriting the Judeo-Christian faith that came with it, it's not possible, right? We, who was it, Dawkins, that said he's a cultural, cultural Christian. Christian? You want to inherit that which was produced by Christendom without claiming Christendom. Okay. That, just to call a spade a spade, that's what that argument is. <laughs> With Islam, the, the difference is Islam, unlike Christianity, Islam proposes a political system and structure in addition to a religious and faith system. Yeah. And so where one comes, the other follows, whether it's by the sword or by the proclamation, where one comes, the other shortly follows. And that's where maybe in my gut, just as a Catholic American, as a Christian American, it just doesn't sit right with me because I do want to uphold the tenets of the country, freedom of religious expression. But in my mind, knowing what I know, in my culture, where I come from, knowing that experience where you have Islam, even in, in, a, in a genuine sense, know that the political system follows. Might not be this generation, yeah, one, could be once, the next. Once there, there's a, and that's where it's like there's enough people. That's that there. slippery slope, and then we lose yeah. what it is this country is founded on. Especially at the same time where Christianity is dying in a lot of places. So that's why a lot at, of people are scared. Like, look at what's going on in England. Exactly. That's why it was scary. Thank you. That's it's scaring going. a lot yeah. of people because they they let go of their their faith, and and I can see where people. You know, especially people who practice Islam, they see the excesses of the West, like what I'm talking about with the Mardi Gras. That's Mardi Gras. Every, it's every day now. It's like, you know, the way that girls dress, you know, you'll see, okay, well, they're wearing nothing. Now, and then you see the extreme that they're wearing burqas. Like there's such an extreme, but you could see why this swings this way. You're naturally going to have a swing this way. And you could see why those things are there because they don't want that for their families. They don't want it to go down to the, this, that it's going to get this so far right, that these things are, are so far left, that these things are going to be off the wall. So yeah. there's these buttresses there, but they can, we can swing too far left or too far right or too far. Hey, we're going to put our women in, in, in sheets and you're going to see their eyes or, Hey, you let your daughter wear whatever she wants and wear a tube top and uh, booty shorts. And that's normal at school. You know, there's, the, the, I can see where that, that, that cry for that, that tradition and like, Hey, this is, it, things can go too far both ways. And we that's why the freedom is that say, discussion. 